We are at the iPhone moment of AI. Let's start from the top. So there's a lot of great questions about whether this AI thing is real or whether it's a trend kind of like the metaverse was two years ago, Web3 and all of these buzzwords that we saw over the last 18 to 24 months in the market. My point is not to bash crypto. My point is not to bash the metaverse at all. My point is to show that we've known about these concepts for a long time, but they haven't reached a mature enough state where we're all interacting with them. So the big thing that we're seeing now that we weren't seeing with the metaverse and Web3 and all that are real applications that people are using right now to add to their productivity, whether it's make money or save time. I encourage you, if you haven't already, to go try ChatGPT, specifically now that it's on GPT-4, and see for yourself what kind of productivity gains you can have. The winners are going to be the people who can ask the best questions. So prompt engineers are people who are the best at verbalizing their imagination in a way that results in a productive output from the generative AI model. And this is something that anyone can do. It's free to go ask a question. It's free to learn about how to ask the right questions. It's free to learn how to break down those questions into their component parts. And then it's free to work with these generative AI models to solve those problems piece by piece. And that's definitely something that I've been exploring over the last few months, especially in the area of investing. I'm a big believer that generative AI is very good at collecting all of the information and giving it to you in a way where you can make your own decisions very quickly. For example, ChatGPT can return results in a table. So feel free to go to ChatGPT or any of these other programs and say, hey, I'm looking at these three companies, they all compete, help me understand where they compete and what their market shares are in each section. Return it to me as a table where each company is a row in the table and each column is whatever you care about, quarter over quarter market share, year over year, stock price versus revenue. So there's a lot of stuff here that the AI can go grab for you without making a decision so that you can look at it in a way where you can make that decision yourself. That's like the thing I wanna highlight there is generative AI isn't a tool. It's like a paid intern that always shows up on time and reliably will try to do its job as best it can. That's how people need to be thinking about generative AI. I really do think that what we're about to enter is the people who can come up with the most creative and insightful questions and get them answered properly are gonna be the winners. It's no longer a matter of the mechanics. I don't need to be the best writer. I need to make my robot assistant the best writer. I don't need to be the best marketer. I need to have my robot assistant truly understand my audience and then ask it the right questions about them. I don't need to be the best engineer. I just need to work with the robot in a way where I can get it to have the right outputs and I can apply them in an engineering workspace. Another thing that people probably aren't realizing is that generative AI isn't just about writing. So one of the things that GPT-4 does very well is write code. What does that mean? That means when a programmer first goes in and needs to write certain functions, whether they're calling databases or building a query or whatever, now what they can do is they can tell generative AI, hey, build me the scaffolding for this code. Build me the basic function definitions, help me understand the parts of the problem in order that I need to solve to get from the input that I have to the output that I want, auto document things as I write them, things that a lot of programmers can do, but it takes up mental space and bandwidth. So now they offload that to the AI and they're working on the parts that they're a specific expert in, the things that make them uniquely qualified to do that job. And then they're offloading all of the mechanical things that anyone can do, like write the basics of a function to the AI. And those AI co-pilots are gonna become more and more prevalent. So another thing that I wanna talk about is generating images, video, audio. Think about all of the skills that the iPhone removed from people. Let me give you an example. Before the iPhone moment, photographers were photographers. You had to own a pretty expensive camera. You had to know how to manipulate photos and film. You had to have a lot of industry expertise. What happened 10 years later is now everyone has a great camera in their pocket. They have access to software and apps that can manipulate photos in a way that a professional used to between the filters and all of the touch-ups you can do right from the app. And all of a sudden, everyone is a photographer. So now all of a sudden, with generative AI, everyone's a logo designer. Everyone is a custom profile picture builder. Everyone is gaining all of these skills without having to learn industry-specific software and hardware. That's the point here. All of a sudden, everyone is able to unleash whatever's in their imagination with a prompt 
now they can make that a reality. Design me a logo, design me packaging for my product, give me 10 iterations of the product I'm trying to design, help me write this course, help me outline my book, help me write the abstract to my PhD thesis. For example, movie dialogue, video game dialogue, NPC actions, like all of the characters in video games that you don't play, and like the basic routes that they take and their interactions and their backstories, AI generated in the next 12 months. The costs are going to go way down because more parts of those are going to be AI generated, which means that games and movies can take more risks because now their profit margins are higher, which means they don't need to just make sequels to everything. They can go make cool movies and games because they don't need as much money to break even. That's the big concept there. Oh, and by the way, these AIs can all translate between multiple languages. So now you can release a movie in 12 countries at once which means your margins get higher and higher, which means you can take more creative risk. Now we're stuck on this stupid tower in the middle of nowhere. And I don't blame you. And now we're stuck on this stupid freaking tower in the middle of freaking nowhere. And it's all my fault. So movies should be getting better, sweeter, cooler not just more AI generated and cheaper. I also think that stable diffusion is absolutely incredible. Midjourney is generating photos that I absolutely cannot tell whether they're real or not. I'm not a commercial artist, but even I can generate photorealistic pictures from my imagination with a single prompt. That's incredible. We need to be trying this technology. Things that weren't possible just a few months ago because we didn't have ChatGPT, we didn't have access to Dolly and all that, are now becoming possible at a rapid pace. So I encourage everybody to try generative AI before they write off this AI wave of technology. The second thing I want to talk about is NVIDIA's Omniverse. NVIDIA's Omniverse is connecting a wide variety of applications to one central ecosystem so that different kinds of professionals can work on large, complex scenes together. The examples that we saw were things like optimizing a factory floor layout to generate the best throughput of cars being built. We just saw that example where they replaced a robot with a different robot and saw that the part that those robots were building got built a little faster. So all of a sudden, you don't need to be a robotics engineer. You don't need to be a professional CAD modeler. All of a sudden, with prompts and with text, now a lot more people are able to generate these complex scenes or at least work on them without necessarily having every professional certification you might have need to have a few years ago. So Omniverse is also going to be an ecosystem, a platform. What does that mean? That means if Mercedes builds a model of a car and other organizations want to use that model, they can license that model from Mercedes and use it in their model and simulation. So for example, if I'm building a factory and I want that model, I can pop it in, I get what it looks like, but also how it behaves based on the materials it's made out of, real physics and lighting engines and so on. So now all of a sudden you have this computational ecosystem where you can build, design, model, and simulate and adjust outcomes based on assets that you didn't have to build from scratch. That's the big idea there. But this is something I'm really passionate about. I strongly believe that AI is going to power the future of many different industries, not just the creator economy like most people are thinking. We saw them talk about drug discovery and medicine. We saw them talk about factory floor optimization. We saw them talk about music composition. So all these different areas of AI are being turned into generative AI problems right now. Generate me 50 factory floor layouts filled with all sorts of different assets and then tell me how well they run and then cut the bottom 25 and do it again and do it again and do it again. And the answer there is now I'm using my creativity to exploit AI, the fact that AI can generate these things reliably and quickly to get an answer that would have taken humans dozens if not hundreds of years to do and reap the benefits of that way sooner. Generative AI is going to explode progress just by the ability to iterate really fast. Give me a hundred versions of this experiment right now and then show me what the best one is and why and what kind of variables I should be watching out for. That's a hard problem for humans to nail. That's a problem that generative AI is expertly good at. The last part I wanna talk about a little bit is the infrastructure. I think a big component of what we just saw is the fact that NVIDIA is releasing one architecture with many different configurations. In my mind, this is really the right approach. Why? Because then when you get like one innovation in one part of that architecture, it's an innovation everywhere. Imagine if they just released four separate chips 
that did four separate things. And now, you know, they're on rev two of one of the chips that doesn't really bleed into the other products. But because they've committed to this one architecture, multiple configuration designs, now whenever there's a boost to say the Grace chip, the CPU, now everywhere that Grace chip goes, will get that benefit. Every time they have an innovation in how they do their networking and get chips to talk to each other, you know, that NVLink technology that Jensen's talked about in the past, all of a sudden, everywhere that technology is benefits from that innovation. And that's huge because all of that connects to the Omniverse and then the Omniverse leverages all the generative AI apps and tools and software that's built on top of it. And so now when you're innovating anywhere in the stack, the entire stack benefits. And you guys definitely are at the forefront and you should take your first mover advantage and run with it. Go try this stuff. You can go touch it. You can go get an output. You can go use that output right now. That's what I've been doing. I strongly encourage everyone here to think about whether you're an investor or a tech enthusiast, how can you use this to benefit yourself? It doesn't have to be making money. It can be saving time. It can be learning new things. It can be accelerating an education. It can be finding new opportunities. The last thing I'll say is I actually really love being a YouTuber. I've only been doing it for about two years. I have no idea what the heck I'm doing as you can tell from most of my videos. So one way I can do better is just by learning more about my audience. And the best way for me to learn about you is just to ask you questions and have you answer them. So I put together a little survey. It's meant more for like tech enthusiasts and investors because in my mind, those are the two people I cater to the most. So if you want, take that survey, let me learn a little bit more about you and I will cater my content to the results of that survey. Do you like investing? Do you not care about investing? Are you here to learn about technology? Are you here to learn about the companies that are driving the future on the stock market? Whatever is interesting to you, I wanna know because that helps me tailor my content and where I can add value to your day to make sure it's something you're actually interested in because at the end of the day, everybody wins. You get more relevant content. I get you watching my videos more often. And I feel good about that. It takes me a long time to make my videos as you can probably guess. So I wanna make sure that the right videos that you actually wanna watch. And that's the point of that survey. It's been awesome live streaming with you guys. Let me know if you find these live streams valuable and if you want me to do them more often, or if it wasn't really that valuable to you, let me know and I won't waste your time. I'm here for you. And until next time, thanks so much for watching. My name is Alex and this is Ticker Symbol U. Bye.